So I'm really ex excited about this episode. One, because I get to see someone who I haven't seen in many, many years, um, who I went to school with for a couple of years. But two, we get to go a little bit glitzy, a little bit glam. Or do we? <laughs> That's what we're going to find out in a little bit. Uh, we're meeting two sisters today who've absolutely nailed it uh, within the film and TV industry, creating one of the most respected location scout businesses anywhere in the UK. Based here in Liverpool, uh, productions like Sherlock Holmes, Bridgerton, Peaky Blinders, Alfie, uh, and global clients like Disney, HBO, and Warner Brothers. Loads of tips coming your way if, if you want to make your business work within the TV and film industry. And I'm sure we'll get a bit of behind the scenes gossip as well ladies but with Faye and Claire Newton Liverpool locations welcome hi hello thank you for having us so so two sisters um I'm sure we'll talk about the dynamics of how how that works and do we have any sibling kind of issues ever <laughs> uh, but but first of all tell us what Liverpool locations is um so I think we it was 2012 we set up Liverpool locations but we'd already been in the industry about 12 years before that um both as Working in the location department for about 12 years and then we'd worked our way up into working as location managers individually on different shows all across the country. Um, and then we realised we just kind of missed home, we loved Liverpool, we loved doing jobs in Liverpool um, and we just decided to kind of advertise ourselves get ourselves out there on a totally different level so um we bought the domain name after a glass of wine um <laughs> liverpool All the location, best domain yeah. names bought after a glass of wine <laughs> liverpoollocations.com and we just kind of um yeah just built up the website and for about a year we just kind of did all the search engine optimization behind the scenes we were already really busy anyway but we knew there was another layer of jobs that we wanted to kind of get calls for as well um sometimes the london location managers were maybe kind of contacting us and we were saying like actually we need these direct calls completely so um nothing really was happening after a year with the the website and then after a year it just went crazy so we were already really busy and then we got all these other kind of calls from across the world so um so yeah so that's kind of how it came about we wanted to be back home and and kind of cherry pick more of the jobs to kind of fit yeah. our life and I'd also had my first child so for me it wasn't it wasn't an option really to be doing the six month jobs where I'd be away or working six days a week that type of thing um I had someone that needed me or wanted me around so um I wanted the jobs that were going to be a bit shorter like the commercials or maybe some scouting work or I was actually really lucky there was a couple of jobs that came to the northwest region that were studio based but they went out on location a few times a week so it was like a part-time job which is really like unheard of so that's what you want so yeah what is so obviously we know about kind of talent scouts um who, who get get actors actresses um children uh, child actors we've got doggy talent scouts and stuff now <laughs> one of them based here in merseyside what's what's a location scout because it must cover so much obviously you're looking for that specific location but that could be anything how, how does it how does the kind of scout process work um, well, we'll get the scripts really early on. Um, we will read those scripts and break them down into what type of location. So what type, um, so it'll be like streets, parks, pubs, houses, cliffs, whatever that may be. And then we discuss with the director and the designer what type of street, what type of house, you know, what happens on this cliff. So we can then get a proper proper idea of what we're going to go and look for we then actually do go out and start looking for stuff I mean over the 20 odd years that Faye and I have been doing this we've got a massive database of locations between us so um you know we're really lucky that we can actually just tap into that sometimes without even having to get into our car but um but yes we do a lot of driving around making a lot of calls Google is like the most amazing thing and I'm really sad to say that Google wasn't around when I first started scouting <laughs> so um so yeah so we do that we then take the photographs the videos we come back to show the directors and the designers you know the the locations that we think fit the brief they then wh whittle it down to the ones that they want to physically go and see uh, we then take them out in our car and we recce them so we recce them and then we eventually find the one that uh, that suits everything suits budget suits availability suits their brief because it's not just what what they want it to look like we have to make sure that we can bring the you know the trucks and the the crew and the have access is it safe you know can we afford it in the budget because every production has a different budget big or small um yeah and we also need to make sure that they're um well we have it quite a lot actually it has to be quiet in the whatever reasonable way you could 
to have that. So, you know, we don't generally want to be filming too close to airports, railway lines, busy roads, schools sometimes because the children come out and play at break and lunch and that sometimes can slow us down because we have we can't record dialogue. So. See, that must be annoying because, say, I don't know, you're looking for somewhere for Hollyoaks and you think that house is amazing for this particular story. But then there's it's next to a train station, and you're like, ah, oh, that that yeah. must it must throw spanners. The logistics you've got to think of logistics, haven't yeah, you? Yeah, we'll, we'll get people or um, like the crew or um, the directors maybe sending us reference pictures. Like this is amazing, this is perfect, and then there's no parking. You can't get up that hill. There's certain things that we can sort and we can kind of go you know what we can try and make this work and we all have chats on whether the time they'll lose to kind of try and access that location and is it worth it but then there's sometimes it's just yeah the hundreds and hundreds of people that you need to get there um yeah you just need to find something else that's perfect <laughs> so, so so let's say i don't know um bridgerton are looking for a stately home mm -hmm. and you know that that's what they're after just tell us that that kind of journey so someone calls you asks for what they want and then how, how does it work yeah so we want to know what period it is don't we so we need to know what period it is and so that we can make sure we get that accurate so it's definitely the right age yeah and then um with a lot of shows um in the very early days sometimes they don't know where they want to be so it could be that they have scouts all over the country so part of what we do um we we might know at that stage that they are looking everywhere so they could have a scout down in London, in Wales, and we would be the kind of Northwest or Liverpool kind of scouts and we would find those manor houses. So they would give us the script or a, a brief of that main location. So wherever that main location is found, they will say, that's where the whole show is going to be based because so i think it was um it was peaky blinders series yeah. three that happened for us um i got a call and just said you know are you available to do some scouting thomas shelby has a mansion house in series three it features so heavily they're looking all over the country and regardless of the fact that we've been in the northwest for two years wherever we find that perfect house is where the production is going to base because we're going to be using it so much wow. yeah so uh, and as i said you know Faye and i have got so many we've got such a great relationship with most of the manor houses in this area that we filmed in um so we you know i looked in our dropbox made the phone calls to them um and they eventually picked arley hall but i remember the phone call of ringing arley hall and saying would you be interested in me you know pushing your photos through as an option and they were like yeah <laughs> and i was just so pleased because they you know um uh, yeah because it's a great it's a great location so would like peaky blinders would they come to you and say right we've got series three we need multiple locations just get it sorted yeah. or would they say specifically we just need that street or it that? depends what sometimes it's the the very early days when they mm. say we think we're going to base in london or we think we're going to base here but show us um we don't think it exists here we might have had already um let's see what exists in the northwest or liverpool so we'll find whatever we can or whatever locations they're looking for or they'll send us the whole script and say we don't know where we're going to be and that's when we're like we need to make this happen let's bring it to liverpool and that's when we chat to the film office as well and really work closely with them to try and say right let's make sure this comes here i love that so you're um, a bit of you've got yeah it's exciting and yeah. you know we know how much kind of um if that whole show came here how great it is for the city so those kind of initial few weeks of those early days of that one one phone call is huge for the city really of us trying to kind of yeah just absolutely blitz what exists and in that script that they've given us it's, so it's selling the city that's what yeah. we're trying to do and we yeah. do that on so uh, so many times over the years they've gone oh they're not sure whether liverpool can give you this cinematic look or and they've got like, can, can. and we're like <laughs> yeah, hang on just just give it just give us a couple of hours because as i said you know we've got so much stuff already on our database that we can just ping pictures over and go come on look look at this well, money shot we've also had it where they've said they are only they definitely set and they're going to film in this part of the country this is what's happening but we just can't find these few things can you um, see if this exists in Liverpool and I've gone yeah yeah we'll do that do you want to send me the rest of the script just in case anything falls through or and I've done it on it and it's been about two or three jobs where they've sent me the rest of their location list and we found and sent them everything exists and the whole show's changed and it's come to Liverpool and we're like yes see yeah. I knew I knew when so, I went um, to school with face we put sales <laughs> she had it and <laughs> um, we've got do you know what this is going to be a long podcast because there's just <laughs> so much to talk about even in these first few minutes it's so exciting what you do and you probably take it for granted every day because you're living and breathing it yeah. but for anyone listening like me now I'm like wow 
<laughs> so we got loads to ask you. We're going to get some advice for people who want to get into film and, and TV, whether that is location uh, management or, or whatever it might mm -hmm. be. Um, and we're going to talk about your business as well. We mentioned one thing there, though, that we, we've got to mention them quick because we know what Kev Bell's like at the film office. He needs his mentions. Liverpool <laughs> Film Office. They have done phenomenal things for, for Liverpool City region, haven't they? J just tell us, for anyone who doesn't know, what Liverpool Film Office is and what your relationship's like with them. Um, I mean, well, from when I started, they were the support network that I needed. Um, you know, they obviously you have they are your first point of call when you come to Liverpool and you want to do film. And they're, they're your, your first point of call for advice. They're your first point of call for information, support, um, but also permissions. So everything needs to go through them. And I honestly haven't worked with other film officers before. I've never found a film office that is that you know they're just so amenable they're so open they'll listen to everything because you know they understand the inward investment that filming brings you know you know people come here and they stay in our hotels they use our taxis they go and lose our local restaurants and shops and they use local crew as well and they you know use prop houses and anything else that we have that's available here so yeah so yeah I, they, they are amazing and still are um and have brought some unbelievable uh, projects <laughs> to Liverpool. But I presume they couldn't do that without the likes of you. They, you know, they need you. So it's, it's a massive network, isn't it? When people just think it's it's just one group of people, it's a full network. And you can see from their team that they love that. They love mm. that there's a thriving network in the city. It's not just about one person, is it? Yeah. They do really look after and kind of all the crew in the city, really. They're always trying to kind of... Um, keep in touch with them. I know they've got Helen, who's in the um, film office now, who's the crew development um, side of things in the office. And she's really trying to keep in touch with the city and the people that work here. And how can she help? But trying to tell them as much as she can about the next job that might be coming. So people have their CVs ready. Um, so, yeah, they're always trying to keep people in the loop and keep that kind of crew tight as well so that quickly they can get on those jobs as soon as they come and it, it does bring millions doesn't it you said there it's yeah. the investment that comes and just people spending in hotels and stuff but the impact financially is is incredible isn't it yeah it's massive absolutely massive um yeah and it does make a big difference i mean even last year they they it was the biggest and busiest year that we've had today and i think it was at 35 years of the film office yeah. and yeah so it just shows it's you know it's it's getting better and better with with their support and you know and they're also they you know they've managed to to secure all this funding for you know the the skills um and training and stuff that they want to do as well so uh, in, even in that is just brilliant because that's local people definitely and a big shout to lynn saunders we must mention lynn, oh, we lynn. Love lynn. <laughs> yes. thank so, you lynn for always looking after us <laughs> yeah keep doing what you're doing lynn and team and give the liverpool film office a little google if you are listening um what makes the perfect location obviously we spoke about the places that aren't kind of workable what what makes that ideal location for you i'm going to be really boring and say parking <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> i'm a parking geek yeah um if i go somewhere and take pictures and like i did that the other day when i went and looked at a couple of theaters and the one that had this big pay and display car park that was council owned next to it oh so happy <laughs> and i was like whoa what has my life come to <laughs> <laughs> right. um i think it's yeah i think um, not just obviously parking, but again, space and space inside the location. So you could obviously have the most perfect location, perfect theatre space, but then you need all the spaces surrounded for all the monitors, mm. for costumes, for makeup to set up. You might have that in a separate trailer somewhere else, but they always need that mini base when they're at location. So it's all those extra rooms and all that extra space within that location for everyone to spread out because it could be 100 crew, 100 extras. Where are you going to hold them when you, they're not being used on set? So um, so it's that huge amount of extra space either side of the, the main piece, really. It's interesting, though, because for me, I would have been like somewhere that, that looks really cool or looks really gloomy <laughs> or looks dark or whatever it might be. But for you, it's logistics because... They're yeah. the things you don't think about. Yeah, because obviously you could find the most amazing place, you know, um, when you talk about like maybe some of the challenges of our job is it is written down on, on paper, but actually that doesn't exist, you know, specifically. So it's us trying to find the alternatives that, you know, that do look 
amazing and tick those boxes. I mean, don't get me wrong. I am always looking for amazing locations, mm -hmm. not just the parking. Um, but yeah, that, that's, a, that's a given that we're looking for something that, that, that on good. screen will, will look great. Yeah. What's it like when you see, like for, you must be so used to it now, but there must be certain moments where you go, oh my God, look how good it looks on screen when you see that final product, that final version polished. Yeah. You must feel proud. Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. I love that. It was, um, I think it was a Sherlock Holmes one I did years ago where um, and it was Canning Street and we made it Baker Street and it was it, it was it was a hard work I was there for about I don't know four weeks before trying to um, you know liaise with all the residents make sure everyone was happy with what we were doing you know because um, and you know they came and they covered all the floor and everything and I remember just on that prep day before the crew turned up and we were dressing it and then looking at it thinking oh my god goodness what what have we done here um and then when they turned up the next day and we had everyone in their, their costumes and the horses and carriages and i literally just put my hands like to the side of my eyes to just blo block out all the crew and the cameras and monitors and and i just went wow wow look what look what we've done like this Brilliant. just just looks magical <laughs> that that's a that's a moment though isn't it because mm -hmm. so many people are seeing that moment as well like it you've kind of thought of originally yeah it must feel good it could have taken months to get to that point as well. I think oh, that's yeah. what it is. So it's kind of from from getting the first script to it could be three, four, or five months be before you actually see that all getting filmed. Mm. So when it does happen, it is kind of goose pimple sometimes. Like, wow, this is amazing. Yeah. What are the biggest challenges? Obviously, I know we spoke logistics as well, but are there any times when you know someone might turn up and think this location's not right? Is is what's the worst thing that can happen in your job when you're filming? Um, to lose a location, I think, um, we, you know, where there's, I, I would say, you know, I've had it a couple of times. One was a fairground, one was a multi-story car park, uh, for different reasons. We lost those locations. Um, and uh, you know, out of 20 odd years, I'm so pleased that it is only a handful that I can think about, but, um, it's how do you find that new location in such a short amount of time when, you know, say, I think I lost the fairground probably three days before we were going to actually shoot oh there. Now God. that's not something that I can easily just go onto our Dropbox and database and pull one out and go, oh, I've got another one. They'll be free in three days time and we can control it all and have no public there and all those sort of things. So yeah, they're the, they're the worst for me. That's the, um, that's when you just feel a little bit sick and you, um, and you just, yeah, yeah. We don't want that to ever happen no. again. No, no. And it, I think, yeah, everyone's waiting then, aren't they? When mm. have you found anything yet? Yeah. I think as well, weather is a huge one. Yeah. You just, yeah. but there, it's completely, you can always kind of think about wet weather cover, cover and always try and come up with options. But yeah, that's the one yeah. thing you can prepare to the nth degree and then look up in the sky Lashes and go, down. well, oh. snows. What oh, do you do? Oh, don't want that. <laughs> um, what do, if, say, I wanted to put my house on, on your database, what? What does the house owner get and how do they how are they treated because i presume in your head you'd be like i'm not doing that I'd be left a tip but it's not like that at all i've seen productions and your house is left cleaner than what it is before before they yeah, got there yeah 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 tell us how that works with the actual owner or business owner it might be who's, who's got um it. well with us um if anyone joined our database um they join it it's for free and we will tell them a little bit about kind of how it could work if someone tried to film at your place. Um, but basically, if anyone or anything comes up in one of our scripts, we will give you a call and say, you fit our brief. Can we come and get more up to date photos um, and tell them kind of what the show is and if it if it could happen at their place? And we give them a description of how much they might get paid um, and what might happen, how many crew would be there. Do you um, break any windows? Yeah. Does anyone get killed in yeah, there? Yeah, can oh, we murder someone in you? Yeah, I think yeah. You, you have to be transparent. I don't think it's fair, when, especially when it's someone's home. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. you wouldn't it's want someone getting, getting killed or shot in you. Well, people room, don't you? mind sometimes when, depending <laughs> on what they get paid. So there's plenty of that. If there is mostly a lot of those conversations. Can we murder someone in your basement? Can <laughs> we brilliant. Um, smash up your house? Um, but obviously we'll put all our own props in there. So we do completely tell them everything. Sometimes if it's that extreme, we will show them the script and say this is kind of just giving you an idea and obviously whatever we smash up it is a fake version or we'll put this back or we'll put something in place that so um so yeah full details we would tell them but sometimes it's that we 
are paid to scout uh, for those locations. We'll say, can we show the production? They'll say yes. And um, and then we'll, yeah, the productions will decide whether they want to film there. And that's when we talk kind of money and contracts and things. And it's kind of the production that then pays them really. So it's kind of free completely to be on our database. And we'll kind of let you know kind of how it would work. And then it's the location team, either ourselves or our team that kind of look after you on the day mm-hmm. and make sure it's kind of left as found, we say. So, or better. So, or better yeah mm-hmm. we need to talk money how much would you get on average and i presume every job is different so if you've got a big country estate you're probably going to get paid more in duration and stuff mm-hmm. how does it work and what what can you earn from from putting your house up or your bar up or whatever well i think like you just said every single job is different so and every single job has a different budget and you've got you don't know how many locations you've got on that budget you've got to share it across all those different locations so i mean you know you could earn 500 pound for your house for the day a thousand pound for your house for the day or or, or depending on like three thousand a day on some of the Um, jobs can i get signed up right away (laughs) (laughs) Um, but yeah again it has to it has to tick all the boxes that we're looking for so you know people have sent us their properties and you know we may not have contacted them ever or we may have contacted them within a week because we're like wow something's just come in on a script and we need a ha- semi-detached or we need a detached that's by the sea or you know something like that so it's, it's a bit of a lottery really it's mad though isn't it because when you think of it <clears throat> and i'm only thinking more of it now chatting to you both you need every type of location yeah so you need flats houses manor houses anything street Everything, corners yeah. Fields, alleyways to yeah. beaches and yeah, yeah. <laughs> but that must make for you every every job then is different yeah yeah and and that's that that's i think that's why i, I love it so much i think because every day is different um you're working with different people all the time and you're looking for different things all the time um you know i don't i don't think yeah I, yeah i don't yeah i just that's why i love it yeah it's just i can't I, I can't get bored with something that is different every day you know and you don't yeah script wise you just don't know what you're gonna get and i've been scouting on something last week and i was just like i'm loving this week this is a cool one this is <laughs> um i did five intense days last week and just kind of just scouted some amazing places rooftops amazing apartments in liverpool was like oh and that's so was that you kind of just going around wrecking it, like seeing thinking this I, it work, yeah it, it could have been like a luxury apartment in liverpool Paul, um, ring of me, you know. yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, re- luxury apartments in Liverpool, rooftops, um, you know, fruit from manor houses to it. So I, I ended up everywhere in the space of that weekend. I was just like, this that was a cool week, actually. And the people that I met, um, and yeah, just it was, yeah, some epic places that I'd not even seen, even though we've both been in the industry 23 years now. Yeah, but the city changes so mm. much. So, you know, we have to keep ourselves relevant, don't we? That's why it's like, that's why we keep still finding all these like surprises because things change so much. And like, even the apartments that, you know, we were discussing that you went to look at, you sent, you went have a look at the link. They've been refurbished. How amazing do they look? And I was like, oh, yeah. So you've got to keep looking and update yourself yeah then, yeah, you? yeah yeah i presume liverpool you get asked this a lot and and you know we've asked the film offers and stuff why liverpool is so kind of why is it why it's doing so well in terms of being a great location when it, it's got everything hasn't it we've got the coastal side of the city we've got the kind of them beautiful buildings that look like new york mm. but we've also got the gritty street corners in some places we were we got to see the responder filming last year yeah and they were filming i won't say where because it's not out yet but they were filming in a location that everyone knows but they made it look so gritty and kind of it was just added to that drama yeah we've got everything haven't we in liverpool city region absolutely yeah um, yeah, the, the the list of kind of things that... Sorry, yeah, gonna... the, well, they're just the different places we can cheat cheat it for is just endless, really. Um, all the different, like, cities and places. Um, you know, we've even used, like, Formby Beach for, for, for foreign areas and, mm. you know... And I think that was with Jude Law. You, Claire was on the beach with Jude Law. Oh, yeah. Oh. That was, oh, that was my, I was on the beach with Jude Law, yes, <laughs> I was. Um, that was a funny one, actually, because um, we were filming at Formby and it was supposed to be somewhere, that the sort of, like, the beach near um, New York and Manhattan somewhere am I getting that right is that right yeah I don't know anyway um we were filming there and I got a call on the radio to say could you go to RAF Woodvale and ask them to stop flying planes across the beach because we can't film any dialogue it's too noisy so I was like is this a wind up (laughs) they were like 
now go. I was like, <laughs> okay. So I don't know how, but I managed to blag my way into the tower at RAF Woodvale. I think they were just humoring me because they thought it was hilarious. Got me up there and they said, oh, this young lady's got something to ask you. So I would like all the operators turn around and I was like, hi, uh, we're just filming on the beach. Uh, just wondered if you could ask the plane to not fly over between, you know, two and, you know, one and five or something just because we're really struggling to record any dialogue. And they just all laughed. They were just like, no, <laughs> but even if we told them, they'd probably fly over anyway, just to see why we've told them not to fly over. So I just had to radio back and go, uh, sorry, that's a no. So they carried on, but I was just like, this is crazy. <laughs> did you not mention Jude Law's name? That could I did, have I did, that. but it's no, they no, still laughed. Yeah. Still laughed yeah. at that. Yeah. Uh, you must get to meet some some characters doing what you do. So you get to actually watch the filming and be part of that as well. Yeah, yeah. We're on set the whole, yeah, so it's find the locations yeah. and then be there for the so whole So be shoot. there as well. well yeah, our manage the Our shoot. team is there, aren't they, managing it? And obviously if it's something pretty tricky or complicated, then we would probably be with our team to support them and supervise if the stunts and, and things like that maybe. Um, but obviously as the location manager, a lot of the time you are ahead trying to prep and find, you know, and sort the locations that the that the, the, um, the crew are going to move to, say the next day, the next week, you know, that type so of thing. So it's not then just about the scouting process is it it's your you're actually a location manager involved in yeah. that production as well yeah so we, it's yeah. kind of two parts to your job isn't it we say it's very project management so yeah so yeah. the early days is scouting finding you take the d director out the designer out producers and you go and decide which ones out of all the stuff we've scouted and then once they finally pick it all that is the kind of project management side of um uh you've already booked the locations you know what you're going to pay them all and you you know, book in with the film office, where, what road you're going to close and speak to the council, police, traffic management, um, it's security. The, it's so it's notifying everybody as well. So let's drop businesses. in the residents and businesses and making sure everybody knows what you're doing and when you're doing it, just to make sure that they haven't got any issues with it or, you know, and if you have, you can, you can discuss how you can pick your man. job. Your job <laughs> we would say it's like, amazing. someone gave a really ex good example. I can't remember who said this, but I thought it was great. It was like, like organising a wedding every single day where hundreds of people are turning up in vehicles but for like three months so you might be filming th <laughs> for three months and leapfrogging between that is a good way so to, yeah. i was like well yeah that is kind of what it's like it's intense and crazy and you just leapfrog between location and hundreds of people are turning up every day and it's that exciting, circus no. it's yeah. trailers and but yeah. then but then obviously that sounds really exciting and then obviously please let me just give you the other the other <laughs> dispel the myth um you know we've been in situations where i'm cleaning dog poo off camera cables because my location was not free of dog poo oh. um <laughs> you know, uh, and you're there and it's like you've been in the rain for 13 hours. Arguing and, with the RAF. Yeah. Up, uh, yeah. And you're on your second pair of waterproof clothes, trousers, oh. shoes, everything. And you're like, living the dream. That's the, the side dream. people don't see, though, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. we yeah. we got to ask. And I know, you know, we're not a big fan of questions like these. We don't have to say nothing bad. But we do want a bit of goss because obviously you get to work with, with the talent as well and see some mega stars uh, in the city we've all heard who's been here over over the years we won't get any any bad goss but who's been your, your favorite kind of a-listers that you've met over the years um Ooh, ha, ha. Uh, it must have been any. I know. <laughs> well, um, Bob Hoskins. Oh. I know, legend. Um, so we were filming sort of like a, it went straight to DVD, actually. That was that was strange for me to go straight to DVD because of the people in it. So Bob Hoskins was in it um, and Stockard Channing, who was Rizzo wow. from Greece. And what film yeah. was that? Um, Sparkle. Sparkle, it was called. Yeah, yeah, Faye, thank you. Um, there's too many, you can't remember. Um, yeah, so we filmed that, and I just remember he was, he was, he was so lovely in the sense that he was just so low key. He just had his driver, this older guy, and all they wanted to do was play cards. So they just like sat in the car and play cards or they went into the hotel room and he came out and did his stuff. And then he went back again and he just wasn't your A-list sort of star. Um, and Stockard Channing for me, I don't really get starstruck because you don't have time. And those people, are, you know, the stars are working as hard as you are, you know, you're like a team. Um, but when I saw her, that, that like, being a young girl watching Greece and then actually meeting her, it was a Rizzo. little bit. Oh, yeah. Rizzo, gulp, 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 gulp. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, is she nice, Stockard Channing? Yeah, she was nice. Yeah, yeah, she was. She was. She was nice. But I don't. I'm not completely sure how happy she was in the role she was playing, like the older woman trying, you know, having an affair with a younger mm. guy, and then he goes off with a younger girl. And yeah, I don't. Yeah, yeah, think, it's not yeah. the role you want, no, is it? Sure I'd say, I'd say, I'd say, that much. <laughs> what about you, Faye? Um, 
I think uh, Film Stars Don't Die in Liverpool oh, is a nice. feature film. I was a location manager on that. Um, so that was a great one. Um, so, yeah, it wasn't like a huge budget one. Um, and it was um, Barbara Broccoli was one of the producers. So she does all the Bond films. Um, so it was her and a few other producers. And they all came up from London and decided what they were going to kind of do in Liverpool. And I took them out and showed them, obviously scouted everything in the Liverpool area. Um and then we filmed in Egbeth um, and did a lot of the scenes there. And everyone in Egbeth were absolutely amazing. Just so excited. I mean, we got them excited as well and got everyone like areas to watch. And I know I just remember thinking Jamie Bell, amazing. Yeah. Couldn't wait to watch him. And I just remember when we'd spent months setting the scene up where he just walks down the street. Um, just like that was another goose pimple. Like this looks epic because it was 80s and we dressed everyone's windows. We dressed all the cars, uh, 80s cars, asked all the residents if they could move their cars cars um so that was a brilliant one Stephen Graham was in that as well Gloria Graham Stephen uh, Graham told Faye to be quiet oh, <laughs> Gloria, <laughs> and that, but, yeah. that's actually you've made it Faye hey, Stephen Graham oh tells God, you to I'm shut so up <laughs> but that uh, was a great great movie as well actually if people haven't watched that film that's one to it kind of yeah it's quite emotional what yeah. you what you do and what Liverpool film office do because it's, it's you'll notice so many areas of Liverpool and it's such a great story as well is it Annette Benning? Uh, yes. Annette Benning, yes. yes, a glory going there tonight. Yeah, Annette Benning, um, yeah, amazing people. Have, they filmed some of it in Pinewood and then they did a massive chunk of it in Liverpool as well. So that was a fun one, yeah. What's it like on set? Because people have got a different idea to what it's, it's really like. It's a long process, isn't it? And it can be, it's hard work. Long day. Yeah. yeah. What, what's yeah. it like? Give us a snapshot. <clears throat> so a normal day is probably like uh, they turn everything on at six o'clock with costume and makeup trailers. Crew turn up at seven for their breakfast. Um, they'll then end up getting into their vehicles and getting to location um, at around about eight o'clock in the morning. Then they, if you're doing like an eight till eight, they'll keep filming till about eight o'clock. Um, we'll then wrap. Uh, de-rig everything and then travel home um, so yeah they can be really long days absolutely knackering you must be shattered after that and you're doing that day in day that's out that's a nice well. day actually I've Is definitely it? had half four in the mornings four in the mornings at unit base making sure it's up and running and everything's ready for kind of yeah the early makeup calls or costume calls and things as well <laughs> i've heard a story about an ice cream van Faye. <laughs> oh yeah i think it's just an example of how we were talking earlier about how the location, the certain things, tick lists for us to make it kind of the right location and noise, obviously we mentioned earlier, is such a, a massive thing and obviously certain things you turn up, you could have realised that, you know, this is going to work, noise-wise it'll be fine and then, you know, a dog is barking or um, a uh, a, an ice cream van is driving around but you can't and it's locations. We actually get radioed if there's a dog barking, someone's got a chainsaw doing the wood in the garden any kind of noise it'll be a location shout out so yeah i just remember chasing around in circles and just thinking god this is mad this is my so job this is crazy that is it's crazy that that's part of your job as well yeah, yeah. that would be but i well, presume it's good because it is your location it's yeah we'll buy, we'll, it's, we'll buy some sorry we'll buy no. some ice cream so you can just turn your music off please so we've bought ice creams to turn music off we've bought bread to take ducks and geese away because they're making too much noise we've bought countless number of bacon butties and beers for builders to start making noise um, and you know what most people are so lovely it's the way you approach it you know we're ever so grateful <laughs> please any chance um, and we've had people that have just been like fridge supervisors because we had a freezer where we're filming we can't turn the freezer off there's hundreds and hundreds of pounds worth of food so someone's job in our team is to stand next to the on and off switch turn it off when we're actually filming turn it back on when we when we start <laughs> But the public are kind of always behind you. Like again, I mentioned then the responder, which I found it fascin I found fascinating to, to watch. And there was a guy at the end of the road on this particular location just telling traffic, Oh, we're filming it just a quick scene and then he'd let them go. And that was his job all day to do that. But it's so important because then I that ice cream van, that could have ruined that whole that whole shop. Yeah. It? So yeah, definitely part of the location team always say the extension that would be our the security, the location marshals, uh the police. So anyone that's public facing as part of our team um yeah we we kind of they're the ones that are kind of speaking to the public and keeping everyone happy and letting them watch when they can and that's what we always try and do because we understand we're taking over a certain area and anywhere or any chance if they're allowed we will say this is actually a really good spot to watch over here but obviously be quiet but we can get you here and you can watch because we're in a public space so we can't stop them officially watching 
So, and then people are really grateful and happy for that. And I'd be the same. If I if it was the other way around, I'd be like, oh, that's cool. Thank yeah. you. So I am polite and yeah. courteous and considerate because you are in someone else's space here. You know, we're guests. That's what I say whenever I'm t training anybody and they've been with me over the years. I'm like, we're guests here. Never forget that. You can never say thank you enough, you know, never say sorry enough either. <laughs> I suppose if you're filming, if they're filming on a set, that's taking you out the equation or am i wrong it's well yes in one way um because but we will have a lot that of is stu yeah, studio yeah a studio i mean a studio yeah we well, might find that space for them to build the studio set so okay. it might be a big warehouse or obviously now liverpool film office and the council have got the kind of studios getting built the little woods ones and the depots um but before that we used to find big warehouses and spaces that could work to build those kind of studio sets but, um, but yeah, if it's a big manor house, we still class it as a set, but it's still us to manage it and look after the owners and look after the beautiful grade listed building um, and make sure it's left better. They must be the best, the big, the big posh kind Ooh, of downtown it's a tricky, abbeys. They are, but for but us as locations, yeah. we're like, ah, oh, be careful with can the light. Oh, so, God, yeah. No. Can you imagine kit? how much floor covering you need to put down, how much protection and move certain paintings that cost, like, are priceless, you know? Yeah. Ooh. Does the owner ever stick around for filming? Are they allowed? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So that must get a bit hairy sometimes. Don't touch that. Don't move. That. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, in one way, it's better if they just, they just, I mean, I've done it before where I've bought them, you know, some vouchers so they can go for lunch and just, go on holiday. just, just, yeah, just no, no holiday. Oh, God, I wish I could afford that. <laughs> um, but yeah, just to, just to get them out, to get them out. I think it's better for them actually to not, to it not. It depends. See. Some are really chilled. And then I can totally understand if it's your first time filming that mm. you might be a bit nervous because even though we might prepare them that there's a hundred people turning up to your home, it's still, Kind of for some people could be kind of a shock to the system. Well, I'd want to see it. If someone's getting murdered in my back kitchen. I want to. <laughs> I want to see how it's done. So and we you, know that we excitement, do, we isn't do it? As much as possible, if they want to watch, um, and we've booked to be in their home as long as they've signed a non-disclosure agreement. Um, yeah, they can totally watch what's happening, and they, they it is exciting for them. We forget how exciting sometimes. Yeah. So. Yeah. So how if just really briefly, how do we get on the, on your database first of all? If we've got a great location, we know our house looks good. It's a bit old. Mm. How do we get on there? Um, literally just Liverpool, www.liverpoollocations.com. And as soon as you open that page, it says add a location to our database. Second J Hind House, add a 3,000 <laughs> a day and free ice cream. Jay, if you, <laughs> if you haven't got loads of parking, I'm not interested. Oh yeah, my path's quite small. So that's that one out. Um, we're talking to Faye and Claire Newton, Liverpool locations, massive part of the film industry here in Liverpool City region across the Northwest and across, across the UK I'm finding this really interesting this podcast is all about nailing it and, and speaking to business owners who've who've nailed it in their field to give advice as well to others who could potentially nail it within that that sector your sector's film and TV what advice would you give to anyone firstly just wanting to get into that industry um maybe Claire we do we do that with you and then Faye we'll ask you about specifically being location manager Claire um yeah so obviously we started with work experience now I say that as if that's easy to find it's not necessarily the demand for work experience is 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 massive um but yeah it, we learn everything on the job so you know and we know that that's the best way to learn as well so yeah if you can if you can follow you know LinkedIn is massive at the moment especially with uh, TV and film people so if you can get yourself a LinkedIn profile and you can start following people and organizations you know and have a look to see you know so you're you're aware of what's up there what's out there about work experiences traineeships um you know even joining Facebook forums you know with like you know film and TV networking you can go to those events and maybe find people that are doing short films that don't have any money but you can get set experience by working for them for free you know and helping out and all that sort of stuff helps you and gives you that you know that extra sort of um step up it's ground level stuff isn't it and it's stuff that we've all had to do you know mm. i started in radio working for free and making the cuppers and yeah just helping out but that's how you learn and not 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 just if you're 16 or 18 any age if you want to change your career to me it's so important that you start I hate to say from the bottom but that's that's the way it is because that's yeah. how you then you then pick up all these skills and experience, isn't it? Yeah, and it only makes you better. Um, yeah. And obviously makes you really good at making cups of tea because anyone, <laughs> everyone that's ever asked me if I want a cup of tea, I remember them. Yeah, I definitely it's a do. big thing. Yeah, a nice cup. 
how do you become a location scout then, Faith, or a location manager? And is that mm-hmm. kind of easy to, to get um, into? To, I wouldn't to say that? it's easy because, I mean, it's definitely a department that is starting to get a bit more well-known. People, I know there's a lot of kind of other departments out there that lots of people kind of know about, but then I think it's starting to kind of get out there that this department, locations, is just as big as every other department. Um, and yet we get emailed <clears throat> daily from people like how can I get in how can I become and do what you do so um we've over the years we've given work experience for like the last 12 years as much as we can but obviously the demand um word's starting to get out and the demand for those kind of inquiries for work experience we're now um start we've set up a one day intensive training course to teach people what we do um or that entry level role really so teach people how to be a location assistant so that's the the entry level role to become a kind of location manager or a location scout um but yeah so um but obviously apart from courses we just say follow location managers there's so many across the country so linkedin like we said before is an amazing kind of tool at the moment there's a lot of people on there uh, a lot of obviously instagram try and find these people in businesses um, and you can message them. I think that's why LinkedIn's quite good, that people seem to want to kind of help and yeah. understand that it's a really hard one to get into. Um, we kind of um, join film office databases, whether you're in Liverpool or across the country, there's film offices across the whole country. Um, and they have entry level kind of um, uh, sections where you can join, even if you have no experience at all. And then you might get booked as a marshal. So sometimes the really big feature films need. So I was on an, uh, an Amazon feature film in the summer um, and we needed a good 40 marshals. Um, and we had people that had come on our courses and straight away they were on the list to be a marshal and booked to be on that. And, and they, they paid for that. They that? were paid um, yeah. and they kind of, their job was to kind of lock off, we say. So it's kind of marshal and um, stop people crew and public walking onto set so and then you get to be in the thick of it and watch everything Brilliant. so and that again um, is that kind of ground level experience isn't it yeah it's the it's the following the people and using yeah. your social media and and attending things you know the networking events and 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 like i say as much experience as you can get on set yeah. you know I, I i had 10 weeks worth of work experience before i got my first paid job now you know i'm not saying you have to do that but I'd never regret that now, you know, and and obviously, hopefully you can afford to do that, you know, in some way. Um, But yeah, it's definitely, it's it's a mixture. It's a combination of a lot of things at the moment. And we didn't have all the social media that we had all those years ago. So we were just reliant on someone answering a fax. Yeah. (laughs) Giving me a day's work experience. So it's a bit easier now, isn't it, to to, to do it? Um, what what would you say to anyone who's who's maybe a bit older? Can they can they still do it, or yeah, have you got to be that? We think that's great as well. There's so many um, uh, transferable skills that people have, so that's mm. amazing. Um, we've had people come in and work with us that um, we've brought in, and they've just been so they picked it up so quick because yeah. they've worked in events, or they've worked as a police officer, or you know they've worked in so many amazing jobs that have those transferable skills. So if you to get into locations. Um, yeah, if you've got those transferable skills um, of the kind of uh, skills we've described of project management or just being really good with people and yeah, communication. People yeah, um, yeah that they, you can just, you can pick things up really quickly. And as well, what I'll suggest, just from my experience of the film industry and TV industry over the years, it can be a job and a career for life that you can make you can make as successful as you want it to be because the network again is just it's so so cool that everyone knows each other everyone supports yeah, each yeah. other and you can kind of move to different jobs there's so many different jobs you can do as well isn't it within within film and tv oh yeah massively i mean we were even talking about the other day there's like intimacy coordinators now isn't there yeah. you know where you I've know seen this because yeah, it was about yeah. um oh god what show was it that was on I watched it and cried last week. What one day? One day. Oh yeah, I'm not watching that. We were talking no. about the inter- <laughs> intimacy director and yeah. roles like that. You just wouldn't even think of, would you? It is. Don't it, watch one day, by the way. No. You'll, be in, you'll be in tears. <laughs> no, I'm not good with the wet, with yeah. the crying one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think that's what I think a lot of people might not realise is that it is unbelievable and so exciting the jobs that are there. Um, 
the you know within locations there's so many different kind of roles to work your way up to be a location manager and then within art department there's so many different directions you can go off to construction to a scenic painter you've got special effects special you've got effects there's just it is it is amazing and exciting i think there's something for everyone if you did want to get into the industry um yeah and people with transferable skills as well so um so yeah it's super it's, it's really nice to work in an environment where everyone's really hard working and creative and sort of supportive you know um there's a lot of banter as well which is yeah which keeps Has you going keeps during you going. the long hours yeah. <laughs> and we got to say as well for anyone that wants to get in and think they're going to be a big film star it's not going to happen it's you need to get on with the hard work and and, and you know put the hours in and yeah yeah get on with the long hours and stuff haven't you yeah but you know what that'll make you better at whatever role yeah. you go into if you started from the bottom because you've got to see everybody and everyone and how they're working and, and then you'll appreciate hopefully when you are looking working with those people at the bottom yeah so obviously again this podcast is nailing it i ask you to kind of finish things off nearly what 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 would you say is the reason you two have nailed it within within the film industry? What's one thing that you'd say, yeah, that's how we've done it? Hard work. Yeah. Yeah, definite hard work. Are we just saying one thing? You can say a few. Um, it's fine. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh no that was yeah if that's is that's what i was gonna i would have gone on then but no, no, okay. carry on, you carry on. um i think we've kind of mixed it up a little bit as well we've because we've um claire's got two boys i've got two boys and we've known that we can't always do these crazy kind of long hours how can we change it up and diversify a little bit so that's part of the reason we'd set up liverpool locations to kind of have more options of the different jobs that are kind of coming to liverpool or the city um, to pick and choose the jobs that kind of work for us. So always kind of trying to grow and um, keep up with the trends that are happening in the industry. Brilliant. It's been so into I could literally keep this going for, for <laughs> hours and hours. We didn't ask about the sibling rivalry. Does that ever happen? I could not work with my brother. <laughs> but um, do, do you ever have do you ever have um, any, any rows or anything? Um, I mean we have probably in the past, but we're quite lucky actually because we sort of as we came up the ranks in the in the location department, we we're working on separate jobs. So it's very rare to be together. And it was lovely actually because it was a novelty. But um Am I allowed to tell them the story about when you started and I, and I was? Yeah, yeah, you are. Yeah. Okay. So, um, <laughs> so I remember uh, working on Alfie the Jude Law one, and we were filming in Manchester, and there was a big crowd scenes, um, and they were all asking, like, do you know anybody? You know, is there anyone that can work with the you know third ads crowd uh, runners? Um, and a new Faye was free at the time. So I was just like, oh, my sister could, yeah, my sister can do that. She's, she's already been doing some of that stuff. And they were like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then after I did that, I thought, uh oh, I was like, this is proper nepotism, isn't it? I was like, oh my God, at home, she's like late, disorganized, untidy, sometimes rude. I was like, oh my God, what's it going to be like? And then when she got there on the day, oh my God, she was, the, she was amazing. The guy who'd, who'd contacted me came back and went, gosh, she's brilliant, your sister, isn't she? And I was like, yeah, for you. <laughs> <laughs> relief i think she scared me the day before though she was like don't embarrass me you need to do this don't stop you never sit down blah, 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 blah. so yeah, so, yeah. Well, you can you can see now you're sitting with you both how well it works and how you know being sisters has massively helped you both um before we finish anything to look out for on film uh, that's coming out or on tv or anything out now where we can see little pieces of your work uh, you should be excited about oh well it's it's the stuff you can say and you can't say. I mean, we we just we just did a big crash on Holly Oaks, which was sort of like a, a, a yeah, that was interesting. That was like, how can you can you close a car? Can you close a roundabout down for a week so we can crash for multiple like multiple car crash four cars? And oh, I was God. just like, oh yeah, of course, let's have a look for that. <laughs> um, but actually, that was one of the ones when I look when I actually watched it. Um, I was like, oh yeah, that's they've done. Yeah, we've done well with that's that. It's just been aired on it, Holly Oaks. Yeah, yeah, it? yeah. It was a good one that one. Lots of old characters coming back. Because yeah. surprises and stuff yeah brilliant Bye. um there is there was a big amazon feature film uh filmed in the summer um at port of liverpool building and st george's hall um so i'm not sure if i'm not i'm supposed to say the name so but yeah that's a big bell on be careful yeah yeah yeah, yeah. That, that was a good one um and yeah that'll show liverpool that'd be brilliant it's all action kind of movie stunts so that was pretty exciting um and then scouting on something at the moment but that doesn't film kind of till kind of early summer so that'll be a while till that one's out so well listen it's been fascinating chatting to you both <laughs> keep doing what you're doing keep shining a massive spotlight on, on Liverpool and, and the city region and of course check out that course as well just where can we find out details on that course if you want to become a location assistant 
Um, on the website, okay. www.pullocations.com. Yeah, yeah, and there's other courses on there as well. We do an art department course, and also there's one-to-one career course as well. If you if you don't want to commit to the course, but you just want to know and, and get some advice and tips, then we do like a, an hour's one-to-one call as well. It's a brilliant, brilliant idea, so check that out. Faye and Claire, final words, anything else you want to add? Oh, no, Liverpool's just brilliant. isn't we it? We love it. Love it. It yeah. is. Thank you. <laughs> Keep doing what you're doing. Faye and Claire Newton, Liverpool locations. Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you. you.